Welcome dear friends. Let's continue learning the STM32 controller programming. In the last video, we have done LED dimming program using the PWM. Today, we are going to explain that code and the theoretical concerns behind that project. So, those who are not yet watched that project, please watch that first. I can give the link in the info button. First, we can analyze the STM32 cube software settings. Then, we will go to the code section. In between, we will understand the theory of the program. So, without wasting much time, let's dive. We can understand our objective first. We have to control brightness of the LED, right? We know that if we give full rated voltage to an LED, it will glow bright. If we reduce the voltage to half, then brightness also got halved. So, in order to control the brightness, we have to control the voltage at LED pin or at the PFI pin of the nuclear board. Using the PWM feature, we can control the voltage at an output. It's all depending upon the duty cycle as shown in the equation. So, we have understood that we have to use the PWM feature of the timer module to achieve this application. Now, we can move for understanding CubeMX settings. Let's start with the timer configuration section first. First one is clock source. Timer always needs a clock source, you know. If internal clock is selected, then timer is clocked by the internal clock provided by RCC or reset and clock control unit. If you want to synchronize your timer with an external signal, then we can go with the external clock option as seen in this list. Next fields are about the timer channels. We know that for general purpose timer, there are channels. It can be used as input or output. In this case, we have to generate a PWM wave at one of the timer channel. I have selected channel 1 for that. In coming to timer parameter settings, we can use our excel sheet for calculating the parameters. For the timer clock, in the last project, we have used 85 MHz and then we have changed it to 170 MHz to increase the resolution. I think you are remembering that. So, we have used the same frequency here. According to our objective, we have to slowly increase the brightness of the duty cycle. So, the idea is we will start with a zero duty cycle, then slowly we will increase that. So, at what time interval we should change the duty cycle? This is the time base we should generate, right? I have chosen a very low time interval of 1 millisecond. So, it would be a smooth transition. So, in order to generate 1 millisecond time base, we have to define a prescaler. A prescaler of 1 will exceed the error value. So, I am keeping 2. So, we got this value for error. I think this would be confusing because this is actually not the error value. Error value will be 1 less than this value. So, can I write here error plus 1? Is that okay, right? Yeah. If it is more confusing, please let me know in comments, okay? Then we have used this uh, prescaler and error value to fill in the CubeMX fields out here. Coming down to PWM generation channel 1 settings, we can go with the simple PWM waveform. And I have selected PWM mode 1. There are other options available which we can try in future with some interesting applications. Pulse value is the capture compare register value. Since we have to modify this runtime, this field does not have any relevance here. So I am keeping it zero. We don't need to pay attention to CH polarity or channel polarity now because for glowing LED it does not play any role. Next we can switch to the clock configuration. At CLK, as we mentioned earlier, it is 170 MHz and timer is getting clock from APB2 bus. So, in order to get 170 MHz for the timer clock, we have to adjust this prescaler. We have converted with CubeMX configurations now. We can start explaining the code. Since we are using PWM feature of the timer, we have to start the timer in PWM mode. For that, we have to use this HAL function. Arguments as you know, firstly we have the timer handle. This handle normally would be defined by the CubeMX software itself. You can see that on the top of the main file here. Second argument is the channel number. It is channel 1 we are using. This is just a macro variable available in the HL library. I can explain something about this guard. If we go inside HL PWM start function, we can see it is returning HL OK if everything went smoothly without any errors in the execution. We are checking this condition in order to detect if there is a failure has been occurred. We can redirect to another function called error handler in the case of an error. If you have a status LED or an LCD display, you can just display an error has been occurred. That would be quite user friendly. Now we can go to the heart of our project. 
basically we have to do two things increase the brightness every 1 millisecond and then decrease the brightness for every another 1 millisecond as we discussed earlier we are adjusting brightness using the duty cycle value or the capture compare register value we started the brightness value with zero any doubt because we initialized the variable itself to zero here now we can increase that i have taken a step of 100 if you reduce the steps it will take more time to get the full brightness of the led now we have to set this duty cycle value into the capture compare register for that we can use this hl set compare function arguments are also familiar here first argument is the timer handle second is the channel number and third one is the capture compare register value to be used so we have set the new value in the ccr register now what we will get a pwm output with this duty cycle but we have to change the duty cycle again right as i said earlier we are changing the duty cycle every one millisecond for that we have to put a delay of one millisecond here now have you understood the answer to my question in our last video good since these are inside a while loop it will be iterating forever until brightness become equal to the error value so what will happen when brightness become equal to the error value we will get maximum duty cycle and thereby the brightness of the led would be also maximum so now we have to reduce the brightness for that the below code section has been used i think now you can understand this easily so first we are decreasing the brightness value by 100 then we are updating the value to the ccr register so duty cycle would be reduced and led will be getting a lesser voltage so brightness of led is reduced a little since it should be done every one millisecond we are putting a delay of one millisecond here so brightness would be decreased and it may go below zero right so we have to avoid that using this condition over here now value of brightness variable will be oscillating between zero and the error value we can try to explain this in a more analytical approach please see this waveform it is a pwm output generated when pulse is 4 and arr is 8 we have explained about this waveform in the pwm explanation video what is the duty cycle here on time is 4 units of time and total time is 9 units of time so duty cycle would be 4 by 9 or as an expression wise we can write in this way duty cycle is equal to pulse divided by arr plus 1 now coming back to our application we have arr value 56,666 as per our code we are incrementing brightness variable to 100 from zero value brightness is ccr value or the pulse value here so at 100 duty cycle will be 100 divided by 56 triple six plus one so it will be 0 0.0017 so if we are converting into percentage it will be 0.18 percentage since our time base is one millisecond up to one millisecond this is our duty cycle right uh, please see the waveform and this waveform is drawn just for demonstration purpose and this is not accurate to the scale okay since we added a delay of one millisecond in the program after one millisecond again we are increasing the brightness by 100 so here duty cycle will be 200 divided by arr plus one so that is equal to 0.35 percentage so now two millisecond is over right again in the next cycle we will repeat the same thing suppose by increasing brightness we have reached at a value 14200 now let's calculate duty cycle here so duty cycle is equal to 14200 divided by 5667 is equal to 0.25 so that means uh, 25 percentage so means duty cycle is slowly increasing thereby brightness of the led also increases when brightness reaches 56600 so duty cycle will be 99 percentage by another increase of 100 will exceed our period value so the while condition become invalid so you can apply the same explanation for the next block of code also instead of incrementing by 100 we are decreasing the pulse value by 100 and eventually brightness is also got reduced is that clear now let's summarize 
First, we can talk about things we should do at CubeMX software. Select the timer output channel where the LED is connected and configure that pin as a timer channel. If you want to connect an external LED instead of user LED on the nuclear board, then any timer output channel you can select here. Verify the RCC external clock sources. Then according to the dimming interval or time base we required, we can select a timer clock. In our case, it was on 70 MHz. In the timer mode, select the clock source. In our case, we select internal clock then we can select PWM generation for our timer channel then under timer parameters fill in prescaler and error value which we calculated using the excel sheet then enable auto reload preload then under PWM generation you can select PWM mode we want in our case it was PWM mode 1 then pulse value you can keep it as 0 in the clock configuration part ensure we are getting the required timer clock in our case it was 170 megahertz then coming to the code side we should start the timer in PWM mode. Then we have to increase the CCR value until it become equal to error value. Then CCR value should be decreased until it becomes zero. So if you do all these things, then you can enjoy an awesome LED dimmer. One viewer has asked for the code of one of our project. So I think I can upload all the code into the GitHub. Maybe I can think about creating a video on how to configure a version control system around Git. Please let me know if you need it. So we will meet again with another Bluetooth for learning content. Love you all. Bye.